Depression is extremely common. Approximately one in 20 people in the United States do suffer from depression of some degree. Um, so it is one of the leading causes of disability in the world right now. The symptoms of depression typically uh, involve a low mood, low energy, um, often sleep and appetite disturbances. In severe cases, people can have suicidal thoughts as well and behaviors related to self-harm. Um, in very severe cases, people can also have uh, hallucinations or other psychotic symptoms. Um, but typically, depression of any um, severity does take an impact on people's uh, work, uh, it can take an impact on their uh, social relationships as well. Depression is traditionally treated with um, either medication um, or psychotherapy or a combination of the two. So now we have many medication options, uh, primarily uh, medications that work in the serotonin system of the brain. Um, and so uh, that's the typical first way that depression is addressed. For the one-third of people who do not respond to conventional treatments or do not respond uh, sufficiently to them, uh, there are several options. One is electroconvulsive therapy, which involves uh, having a procedure three times a week that typically involves anesthesia. Um, it is the most effective treatment we have for depression, um, but it does carry uh, several uh, risks and uh, there is the time commitment as well, so it's not a practical solution for everyone. Another option um, which has been cleared recently by the FDA is transcranial magnetic stimulation, um, which is a treatment that also requires frequent visits, but does not require anesthesia, um, sedation, or other types of medical monitoring. So transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS, uh, is a procedure that involves uh, rapidly alternating magnetic uh, fields focused on certain areas of the brain. And when we do that, it induces a stimulating electrical charge um, on the surface of the brain um, with an effect that eventually, over time, has a positive benefit for areas of the brain responsible for mood. TMS does require frequent visits, actually daily, five days a week for four to six weeks for a typical treatment course. So it does require a time commitment, but for people able to do that, um, they do stand to benefit from TMS when they have not benefited from other treatments in the past. The treatment itself lasts just under 40 minutes. The entire appointment typically lasts about an hour from start to finish. The effect of TMS can last uh, well beyond the completion of the course of treatment. Typically, we do an acute treatment course of four weeks. Um, and at the end of that time, if the person's had some response, but not as much as they would hope for, we'll continue for an additional two weeks as well. Um, from that point forward, it, people can choose to either take a break to kind of see how things go, and that treatment effect can last for months uh, following the conclusion of the treatment course. Side effects uh, from TMS uh, are typically mild. They include uh, headache, uh, lightheadedness sometimes, and um, mild discomfort around the area of the treatment. Usually by the time the person leaves uh, the treatment, they don't have any side effects at all, and they're generally able to return to their daily activities. The TMS program at Brigham and Women's Hospital does offer um, treatments by physicians uh, specifically trained in treating patients with complex medical as well as psychiatric conditions. Um, we have uh, the latest equipment and are now in new space in the Building for Transformative Medicine on the main campus.